Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Coffee, where today we're going to be diving into updated and expanded of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yes, this is what you have all been asking for in the comments, the Jedi Paxis Rise of Skywalker updated and expanded. So there will be a spoiler warning here for this video. This is The Rise of Skywalker. If you are new to this channel and you love Star Wars, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on this video and any other content you watch. And be sure to hit that notification bell, not once, but twice so that you are always updated whenever a new video goes live. But with that being said, let's dive on into the updated and expanded Jedi Paxis The Rise of Skywalker. Here we go. Luke is training Leia as a Jedi. Lightsabers are involved and Leia reveals to Luke that she is pregnant and Leia makes the decision to end her Jedi training due to the impending birth of her son, Ben Solo. Next scene, the present, the Resistance jungle base. Here in the present, Leia has picked up where Luke left off and is helping Rey become a Jedi. Rey is first seen doing some mental force training, but she is struggling with this. She asks Leia to do some physical training courses instead. And this is where we see Rey doing the Jungle Forest lightsaber throw in the D23 first look. Following this, we're going to be on a forest planet bathed in red light. This planet, Jedi Paxis, does not have a name. Supreme Leader Kylo Ren has been aware of a dark power behind his predecessor, Snoke. Kylo has been spending his time as leader of the First Order with the purpose of locating this power. Generals Hux and the new General Pride have been following Kylo around on his quest and are beginning to be frustrated with what they feel like is just a chase for nothing. They see this as a waste of the First Order's resources and time and get very frustrated with Kylo Ren. Kylo is leading an assault on this planet to find Darth Vader's Wayfinder. The device reveals coordinates within the unknown regions and Kylo is confident that this will reveal the source of Snoke's power. Kylo Ren slaughters his way through, which is what we see in the teaser and in the trailer, and has eventually led to the Oracle who gives him Darth Vader's Wayfinder. Next we move to an asteroid base, where we pick up with Finn and Poe on the Millennium Falcon, accompanied by some unfamiliar characters from the Resistance traveling to meet a First Order informant. The informant, which is an alien, is acting as a middleman between the First Order Mole and the Resistance. The First Order arrives and begins to attack the base, assaulting our heroes where they're clearly outnumbered and have to make a quick getaway. Light springing involves making this jump to light speed without plotting a course. So as we remember, making the jump to light speed without calculations as Han has told us has had dire consequences. And this is what our heroes will be doing. The Falcon makes a handful of springs to the First Order off of their trail, but they are forced to deal with the consequences of such a risky maneuver. After surviving this, they plot a course to the Secret Resistance jungle base to meet up with Leia and Rey. Next we're heading to the Unknown Regions on a planet called Exegol. After obtaining Vader's device, Kylo travels to the place specified by the Wayfinder. It takes him to the Unknown Regions and a dead planet of Black Rock. Kylo lands outside a giant cube floating just above the ground and begins walking toward it. Kylo walks between the cube and the ground and once he reaches the center, discovers an elevator leading down below the planet's surface. He follows the lift down and finds an old man near death and lying in bed and being tended to by cloaked aides. This is Darth Sidious. Kylo initially dismisses the old man, knowing the Emperor died over 30 years prior to the forest moon of Endor's collapse. Feeling that this must be a trick, Kylo claims that there must be some other explanation, such as the man being a clone. Palpatine refutes this idea and affirms that he has indeed survived his fall. After his defeat at Endor, he left the known galaxy and traveled to the unknown regions to rebuild his empire. Despite his skepticism, Palpatine begins to reel Kylo in and subsequently tells him of something known as a Force Dyad. The Force produces two incredibly strong users, and when they unite together, both become stronger than either one could be on their own. Palpatine tells Kylo that he believes this is him and Rey. Palpatine tells Kylo that he wants him and Rey to rule after he is gone. Palpatine orders Kylo to bring Rey to him and to turn her so that the Dyad will be strong, a unified force of darkness. 
Palpatine also reveals that he has been amassing an armada of Star Destroyers equipped with Death Star tech, each one capable of destroying a planet on its own. General Hux and General Pride are tasked with rounding up children in large numbers to train and staff his armada. Next we go to the Resistance jungle base where Finn and Poe return to the Resistance, bearing the knowledge obtained from their encounter with the First Order informant. The duo brings the knowledge to General Leia Organa and tell her what they know about Kylo's mission to the Unknown Regions, but without any leads of where he went or how he got there, the Resistance is at a dead end. Leia mentions that she might know someone who was sinking a leak between the Unknown Regions long ago and may be willing to help. Leia dispatches the two of them, along with Rey, Chewbacca, and BB-8, along with C-3PO, to Pasana to meet with her contact and see if he may be able to provide any help to the Resistance. Next we travel to Pasana. When our heroes arrive on the planet, they discover a giant festival is going on. What they thought would be an easy mission has now turned into a much more complicated affair. They attempt to lay low and blend in. Unsurprisingly, Chewbacca struggles to blend in as a seven foot tall Wookiee with prying eyes. Rey encounters an alien in the crowd who takes a liking to her, presenting her with a handmade necklace as a gift. She is asked her name and she responds Rey. When asked her family name, she replies she doesn't have one. At this time, Kylo establishes a connection with Rey through their force bond. The conversation ends with Kylo grabbing the necklace from around Rey's neck. The necklace proves to be the key to the First Order discovering their location. After the connection ends, Rey warns her comrades that the First Order is on their way and they must hurry to find Leia's contact. It is at this point, instead of finding their contact, their contact reveals himself after having spotted Chewbacca out of the crowd. The contact is none other than Lando Calrissian. Greetings and introductions are exchanged and Lando tells them of a dagger that helped them find what they seek. Many years prior, Lando and Luke went in search of this dagger that was once owned by a Sith loyalist named Ochi. They tracked Ochi to Pasana when the trail went cold. When met with the question why he never left the planet after the search for the dagger, Lando tells them that he had a young child at the time of his and Luke's quest. While they were out searching for the dagger, the First Order stole his child. After having failed to protect his child from the First Order, Lando and Luke parted ways and he stayed on Pasana ever since. This story strikes a chord with Finn, having been stolen from his own family at a young age as well. Lando points them in the direction of the last known coordinates of Ochi's ship, where the trail went cold all those years ago, wishes them luck in succeeding where he failed but decides to sit this one out. Our heroes follow the trail that Lando pointed to them and they eventually find Ochi's ship. When Rey sees it, it triggers some memories. It's the same ship that we see leaving Jakku in Rey's vision from The Force Awakens. Before the implications of this can sink in, the ground beneath them gives out and the crew gets sucked below the surface of the sand. They find themselves in a series of underground tunnels where they discover the remains of Ochi and the dagger that Lando and Luke sought after. Rey feels very strong connection to this weapon, but can't quite articulate it. The dagger has writing on it in a language that nobody can identify. It's then handed over to 3PO, who identifies the writing as a Sith language. But he reveals that he's unable to translate the writing due to restrictions in his programming. At this time, a plan is made to hack into C-3PO's programming to bypass these restrictions. Poe mentions that he has an old contact who might be able to help them out. Chewbacca takes possession of the dagger and the group's attention shifts to finding a way out of these caves. During their escape attempt, the team runs into a giant aggressive sandworm. A battle with the sandworm ensues and our heroes end up backed into a corner, preparing to meet their fate when Rey notices a small detail. The worm is injured. In a display of a previously unknown power, Rey is able to heal the worm's injuries satiating the worm and providing the heroes the chance they needed to escape. Once the crew exits the cave system, they see a First Order Star Destroyer in the sky and know that Kylo Ren is there. Once they realize this, they reason that the First Order would have already found the Falcon, making the plan to escape impossible. The Falcon is boarded and subsequently taken back to the Star Destroyer. In an act of desperation, the crew boards Ochi's ship and attempt to get it working. 
It's on this ship that the crew discovers the new droid, D.O. Ray senses that Kylo is coming for her, so she takes off on her own to confront him and buy her friends some time. This is where the tie interceptor flip sequence from the first teaser takes place. While Kylo and Ray are engaged, the Knights of Ren and the First Order head for Ochi's ship and our other heroes. Chewbacca splits off from the crew and attempts to delay the Knights, but is captured. The dagger is taken from him, and he boards a First Order prisoner transport. Ray and Kylo both notice Chewbacca being taken captive and brought to the transport ship during her confrontation with him. As the ship takes off, Ray shifts her attention from Kylo to her captured friend and begins to use the force to stop the transport to pull it back to the ground. Kylo attempts to counteract this by pushing the ship away. Control over the ship becomes a lightsaber battle between Kylo and Rey, much like their battle for Anakin's lightsaber in The Last Jedi. Kylo begins to gain the upper hand, which angers Rey, and her frustration, lightning, shoots from her hand, destroying the transport ship and killing all its passengers. Devastated by what she just did, Rey collapses. While all this transpiring, Poe, Finn, 3PO, and BB-8 get Ochi's ship in the air just in time to fly over and pick up a distraught Rey. With no Lando, no Falcon, and no Chewbacca, our heroes limp away from the desert planet. The heroes of the Resistance make their way to the snow-dusted planet to execute their plan to discover what secrets the dagger held. Despite not being in possession of the dagger anymore, 3PO tells the crew that he has the message committed to memory, so all hope is not lost. Poe tracks down an old contact of his, Zori Bliss, who brings them to a small creature named Babu Freak to hack 3PO's programming to read the language of the dagger. Freak tells everyone that he can unlock the message to be read, but in doing so, 3PO's memory will be wiped. Still reeling from the loss of Chewbacca, the heroes argue about finding another way to get the job done. But in an act of self-sacrifice, 3PO voluntarily consents to the droid's modifications, knowing that the droid we've known all of these years will essentially die. According to the sources of Jedi Paxis, this scene is reportedly the most emotional one in the film. Freak completes the hack, and 3PO is now able to read the message inscribed in the dagger. This action sequence creates the red-eye 3PO that we see in the D23 footage. The translated text points them to the location of the Emperor's own Wayfinder. Having served his purpose, 3PO's memory wipe begins and he shuts down. Once the memory wipe is complete, 3PO reboots with a completely empty memory. While on this planet, Kylo initiates another mind bond with Rey to try and divine her location a second time. Kylo spends much of this time antagonizing Rey. Some of this conversation revolves around her parents and the truth behind the dagger. It was once used to murder her parents. Many years ago, Ochi was sent to murder Rey's parents, who were trying to hide Rey from the galaxy. Ochi succeeded, leaving her parents as nobodies to be forgotten by that galaxy. Where Ochi failed was with Rey. He could not find her, so he left her behind on Jakku. This is what Rey remembers, the ship leaving in the wake of her parents' murder, not her parents abandoning her. Rey lashes out at Kylo during this bond, and their lightsabers clash. Having gotten everything he needed from Rey during the session, he cuts off the bond. The Star Destroyers arrive, after having followed our heroes there. As Kylo makes his way down to the planet, Zori helps the Resistance escape by employing the use of something described as a First Order Passage Device. Something that transmits a signal, recognizes friendly, to the First Order, allowing the ship to pass uninterrupted. As our heroes make their escape, we see that Palpatine's orders Hux and Pride are being carried out as children are being rounded up by soldiers of the First Order. This next sequence takes place on the First Order Star Destroyer above this planet. As the heroes escape on Ochi's ship, the group makes the decision to use the passage device to board the Star Destroyer and recapture the Falcon. The device works as advertised, and their ship lands without question. On board the Star Destroyer, the droids log on to the ship's computer network to locate the Falcon. But in the process, they discover that Chewbacca is still alive. He was on a definite prisoner transport the entire time. The team hatches a plan to rescue him, but Rey splits off, feeling as if something is calling to her. Meanwhile, the others find Chewie, but their rescue attempt fails and they are all taken captive. The calling Rey feels is caused by the dagger, which draws her 
to it in Kylo's living quarters. Back on the planet's surface, the planet having grown tired of a fruitless search for Rey, Kylo initiates another force bond with her. He discovers that she's on his Star Destroyer, and a lightsaber duel breaks out between the two of them across two different locations. Kylo on the surface, and Rey aboard the Star Destroyer. During this encounter, Kylo reveals that there is more to the story behind Rey and her parents. Rey is the granddaughter of Emperor Palpatine. He tells her that they are meant to join together on the dark side, and that it's all part of the Emperor's plan. It's clear that at this point in the story, Kylo is fully committed to what the Emperor's mission is for him. Once Rey and Kylo's force bond duel ends, Kylo makes his way back to his ship, and Rey grabs the dagger, and Chewbacca's, and bolts. Rey bumps into a fresh-minded C-3PO along the way, hands him Chewbacca's effects and the dagger, and tells him to make a run for it while she stalls Kylo. When it appears that all is lost for our heroes that have been captured by the First Order, General Hux arrives and surprisingly not only allows them to escape, but points them in the direction of the Falcon. Hux was the mole within the First Order that Finn and Poe had received information from. Rey and the other heroes make a break for the Falcon and escape. After they leave, Kylo kills Hux for treason against the First Order. From this point forward, General Pride is the sole commander of the First Order military. The Emperor contacts Pride and demands that he use one of them specifically equipped Star Destroyers to destroy the planet and act as a loyalty, and Pride complies. Next we travel to Endor, where the information gleaned from 3PO's translation of the dagger's writing leads to the location of a second Wayfinder device, which turns out to be aboard the wreckage of the second Death Star on the forest moon of Endor. Along their way to the wreckage, the crew comes in contact with a person named Janna. It is revealed that she was press ganged into the First Order service as a child, but eventually escaped and found her way to Endor, where she has been living for some time. At this time, it is revealed that she is the child that Lando lost to the First Order all those years ago. Janna provides way with transportation to get to the Death Star wreckage. Rey makes her way to the wreckage and begins climbing her way through its twisted remains. She eventually reaches the Emperor's throne room and discovers a chamber connecting to that room that contains the second Wayfinder. Rey approaches the object and picks it up, which induces a vision of a possible future for herself. It is in this vision that we see the dark side Rey, as seen in D23 footage. Jedi Paxis also confirms that his sources have told him that we hear the Emperor's voice in this scene. The vision shocks Rey, and she stumbles back into the throne room where Kylo Ren is waiting for her. Kylo takes possession of the Emperor's Wayfinder, destroys it, and indicates to Rey that the only way to get another Wayfinder is to go through him and take Vader's. A lightsaber battle ensues, beginning in the throne room and eventually transitioning to the exterior wreckage among the waves. Back to the Resistance jungle base, off in another part of the galaxy, while Kylo and Rey clash lightsabers, a bright light in the universe begins to fade. Leia is dying. Before her death, we hear the voice of a familiar hero come to bid her farewell and pass on a last bit of knowledge. As their battles rage on, both Kylo and Rey sense the death or respective death of mother and mentor. They both react, but Rey recovers from the shock sooner and leverages that moment to take Kylo's weapon from him and stab him through the chest with it. In the aftermath of their concluded duel, Rey declares to Kylo that she will never be like him and fall to the dark side. She exercises her newfound healing ability to save Kylo from death, steals his ship along with Vader's Wayfinder aboard it, and takes off, leaving her enemy behind. After Rey leaves the forest moon, the remainder of the Resistance crews board the Falcon along with her newfound ally, Janna, having spent the duration of Rey and Kylo's fight repairing the ship and return to the hidden base on the jungle planet. Broken and defeated, Kylo Ren remains on the wreckage of the second Death Star when he is visited by a vision of his father. Han speaks to his son, telling him that it's never too late to return to the light and make the right choice. This conversation has a profound effect on Kylo, and in a symbolic gesture, he discards his lightsaber and walks away from darkness and the identity of Kylo Ren, returning to Ben Solo. 
Following her experience on the Death Star, Rey returns to the island on Octu. Throughout the course of the film, she has given in to her aggression, nearly killed her friend by unleashing a stream of lightning on a ship, learned that she is the descendant of a Sith Lord who reduced the Jedi to numbers that they had yet to recover from, even half a century later, saw a vision of herself as a servant of darkness and stabbed her enemy through the chest in anger. Her most recent encounter with Kylo was the last straw and Rey has now made the decision to follow the example set by Luke and exile herself on the island where the Jedi began. Rey scuttles the ship she stole from Kylo and throws the repaired lightsaber originally constructed by Anakin Skywalker in after it. A ghostly hand snatches the lightsaber out of thin air as it's being thrown. It's Luke Skywalker. Luke's conversation with Rey is said to be encouraging, yet realistically grim in tone. Luke knows firsthand what it's like to face Palpatine, and it's not an easy task. Rey must confront Palpatine in the same way that Luke once had to confront Vader. Luke encourages Rey by telling her of the faith Leia had in her. She saw potential within her and hoped that Rey would be able to restore balance to the Force once more just as Anakin once did. Rey supposedly asks to speak at Leia at one point, but Luke responds by telling her that Leia has not yet completed her training and cannot yet feel her distinctive consciousness within the Force. By the end of their conversation, Rey is re-energized for the seemingly insurmountable task that lies ahead of her and agrees to leave the island. Having destroyed the ship she used to come to Anak to, Luke raises his own X-Wing, previously seen submerged in the coves of the island, to allow Rey to face Palpatine. In addition to the Starfighter, Luke gifts Rey with a lightsaber that once belonged to Leia. He tells her how Leia left her saber with Luke when she stopped training, and Luke kept it on him. He then points Rey to where he kept it safe in his hut. Rey boards the X-Wing, armed with coordinates for Palpatine's location, obtained from Vader's Wayfinder, and leaves the planet. Next we head to the Resistance Jungle Base. After returning to the Jungle Base, several things happen. After seeing the sacrifice made by 3PO, R2 reveals that he has a backup of C-3PO's memories in his archives and is able to restore the droid to a mostly whole state. My sources believe this backup memory to have been created sometime around the time of The Force Awakens. It's an older C-3PO, but it's better than no 3PO at all. Lando re-enters the story, having changed his mind coming to the jungle base and wanting to help however he can. It is at this time that Rey begins transmitting coordinates into the unknown regions obtained from the Wayfinder to the Resistance. The Resistance mobilizes, readying themselves for the impending conflict. Moving to the unknown regions in Exegol. Rey follows the coordinates found in the Wayfinder to the same spot Kylo did earlier in the film. Rey lands outside the giant cube floating above the ground and makes her way through the same underground passages. The cube composed of black rock floats several meters above the ground and is so massive that one corner cannot be seen in frame. As Rey travels down into the depths of the planet, giant Sith statues can be seen. Where Rey and Kylo's experiences begin to differ, come in with Rey discovering Palpatine. Palpatine is not in the same chamber that Kylo discovered him in, but in a huge arena surrounded by Sith loyalists in dark cloaks in the grandstands. Palpatine is being supported by some kind of mechanical arm, possibly connecting him to life support machinery. Rey begins to confront Palpatine. During this conversation, Sidious reportedly confirms Rey's lineage and goads her on to take up a lightsaber and strike him down, very much like how he encouraged Luke to do with the same thing 30 years prior, telling her that only in killing him will she gain the power needed to save her friends. Palpatine also apparently makes statements alluding to the belief that Vader could not betray Luke due to their familial bond and that the same kind of bond would ultimately cause Rey to do whatever the Emperor wishes. During his taunts, the sickly Sith opens the roof of the stadium chamber, revealing that the sky above is filled with Star Destroyers, soon to be embroiled in conflict with the approaching Resistance. As the battle between the First Order, Empire, and the resistance begins to rage in the skies above them, Rey gives in to the Emperor's commands and decides to strike him down. Through means that are still a bit foggy to me, 
Ben Solo was able to leave the wreckage of the Death Star and his former persona behind and travel to Exegol with the purpose of joining Rey to help her face down Sidious. Before leaving the Death Star's wreckage, Ben abandoned Kylo's lightsaber, so now he's walking into a war zone with no weapon. When he arrives on the planet, he encounters the Knights of Ren, who are guarding the entrance to the arena where Rey and Sidious are. Ben reportedly dispatches each of them using only the Force. After doing that, he enters the arena as Rey is about to strike the Emperor using Leia's blade. Ben grabs Anakin's lightsaber and warns Rey to reconsider what she is about to do, to not kill the Emperor in anger. Seeing Ben arrive pleases Sidious. He then uses his power to bond them together and begins to siphon power from that bond and direct it into himself. As the power flows into him, the once Silky and decrepit Palpatine stands tall and strong once again, restoring himself to a much younger, healthier state. Now we go to the skies over Exegol. While all this action is happening on the ground, much more explosive events are happening in the sky. The Resistance and the First Order are locked in battle. The details I have on what happens during this branch of the plot are a bit sparse at the moment, but here's what I have been told. The Resistance arrives, and they are confronted with hundreds of Palpatine's Sith Star Destroyers. Their goal is to take out the flagship of their destroyers, where General Plyde is located. Taking out the flagship will supposedly sever communications with the rest of the fleet, and prevent them from being able to navigate the perils of the unknown regions. At one point, during the battle, Finn and Janna, joined by others, land on Pride's flagship to destroy it. They recognize this as essentially a suicide mission, but Finn and Janna in particular see they may have to pay as worth it to prevent more children from being abducted like they once were. One of my sources described it to me like a D-Day type mission for the Resistance, where they attempt to land onto a moving Star Destroyer amidst the battle scene. Having returned to full strength, Palpatine shoots lightning into Ben, forcing him to fall into a bottomless abyss, never to be seen again. Sidious then shoots lightning into the sky at a resistance ships. He reportedly continues to make statements about how Rey will join him. In defiance of this, Rey grabs both Anakin and Leia's lightsabers and Palpatine turns his wrath on her. It's lightsaber versus lightning, and at this point, when it seems like they have all hope is lost, the spectators of Luke and Leia come to her aid. They jointly work toward overpowering the Emperor, deflecting his lightning back toward himself, killing him and unleashing an explosion powerful enough to make the arena start to crumble around them. Darth Sidious at last, and the Sith Lords is finally dead. At the same time Finn and Janna complete their mission and succeed in destroying Pride's flagship. The two are prepared to go down with the ship, but are rescued at the last second by the Falcon. Rey escapes the crumbling arena. Back on the Resistance jungle base, having won the day, the survivors of the battle regroup at the jungle base and celebrate. What follows is apparently celebration across the galaxy, once again mirroring what is seen at the end of Return of the Jedi. Back to Tatooine. For the end of the film, the heroes then travel to where everything began, the desolate, sand-swept planet of Tatooine. Between defeating Sidious and at this moment, Rey has disassembled Anakin and Leia's lightsaber and used their components to construct one of her own that contains a yellow blade. Ray buries the leftover pieces beneath the Tatooine sand at the site of Lars' homestead. As Ray turns to join Finn, Poe, Janna, Chewie, R2, 3PO, BB-8, and D.O., a stranger calls out to her. The stranger apparently speaks of how nobody has been seen around this land for a very long time, and asks Ray for her name. This is the second time in the film that this question has been posed to her, but unlike her response on Pasana, Rey has decided who she was. She gives the name Rey Skywalker to the stranger, adopting the name of her masters and revealing the primary meaning of the title of the film. As Rey begins to rejoin her friends, she catches a glimpse of some familiar glowing figures watching over her. The assembly of heroes look off into the distance at the horizon of the desert planet and watch twin suns set on a universe filled with hope. The End